I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're on the air right now. Welcome uh, back to Castle Kitchen. This is episode eight, and we're going to continue on a roll here with our Spanish themes. We're going to be making a chicken quesadilla. There you are. Shoot it out of the bag. Kissing, uh, chicken quesadilla. Uh, what we're going to be making, a little bit different than usual. We're not going to grill it. We're not going to, you know, bake the chicken, whatever. We're going to instead deep fry the chicken. So, and what's going to be different about this deep fry is we're going to first coat the chicken in guacamole. Then we're going to batter it, then fry it, slice it up, put it in our cheese quesadilla. Obviously, it's gotta be cheese. I mean, it wouldn't be a quesadilla without cheese. Duh. So, we're gonna make our chicken quesadilla. So, now, back to what I was thinking about. We're gonna head over this direction. We're gonna just chat up about what we're gonna need to make this awesome meal. You're gonna see some photos. You know, you know the usual spiel about the show. Yeah, usual. Yep, yeah, still thinking. Yeah. Probably should get just to get going and cooking in this. What do you think? Just slowly turn this way. Think my way this way. Think my way this way. Well, thought my way over here. So, I guess we're just gonna ramble on now what we're gonna need for this chicken quesadilla. First and foremost, the most important thing here, chicken. Duh. Gonna need that. Second thing we're gonna need, guac. Now this is a special guac. This is from the Mayans. Uh, them with their doomsday calendar. Kinda died of this stuff, really. Um, it's the doom I guess you could call it doomsday guac. Yeah. Just kind of get doomsday quack in there from South America. Not much to say about that. Probably not good for your health. Poisonous. Molded Wisconsin uh, cheddar. It's gonna be important. That's the top three you're gonna need. So now we're gonna go on to what we're going to mix with our guac here. We're going to you know, mix some stuff with it. We're going to need stinky rose. going to need some garlic. Sourpuss juice. And, oh, nope, nope, nope that's later. Uh, we're also going to need some blank. I'm blanking here. What, is, what was this? Oh yeah, now I remember. This is the cursed uh, herbs from, you know, Mexico. Aztec herbs. I mean, we're mixing a little bit of culture here. This is cursed Aztec herbs, and then like, I guess we have a lot of cursed stuff when you come to think of it, so, you know, cursed Aztec you know, herbs. Anyway, we got that, and we got uh, Mayan stuff here. We got a little bit of everything south of the border, so. Anywho, we're also gonna need some eggs. Some eggs. We're also gonna need some human bone powder. Duh, to fry it. And then we're gonna need some dragon scales. So, some good old dragon scales will help. That's just a mix with our human bone powder. I'll explain it later. I want to go to show you. So, let's go on to the photos, see how much you're going to need for all of this stuff. And then, after that, we'll talk about mixing it all up. Obviously, I'm going to deal with the chicken and get on with it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Simple. So, on to some slideshow photos. And then, hop back over here and we'll show you how to make all this magic. Leo's deal with this chicken here, and we are wearing gloves, and very important, you don't want to cross-contaminate anything, 
So we want to make sure not to do that. What we're going to do right now is we're going to take their chicken here and we're going to cut off some of this excess fat. Now why am I using chicken instead of like human parts or something like that today? Well, simply because a lot of this, a lot of chicken, chickens are very important. That's why I have regular eggs and stuff like that. Because chickens are very important. You use them in all sorts of witchcraft and voodoo spells and stuff like that, so. They're all part of this, you know, immense cycle of magic. Well, that's about a little bit more on the top right here. There we are. Get that a little bit off. Alright. That's about good. I don't think we have any more that we have to remove from this. Keep going off camera here. I just want to make sure that I got it all off. All right, so got all of that off. Now what we're gonna do is just gonna cut it in half. You don't need this whole thing, uh, just like half of it. There we are. Good uh, slices right there. that with the second one. Alright, so we got our chicken taken care of. Now we're going to prepare our little quark mix here. Take our multitude of seasonings right here. Shake it up, just mix it all together. Throw that right in there. Get our little spatula here. Mix it in there. All right, now our sour puss juice. Bam. That's all perfectly mixed together now. So, now we're going to go ahead and add our chicken to it. We're also going to add over here a pair of our eggs. All right, we got a separate plate over here for our finished product. Just gonna move some of this stuff around. Actually, you know what? Move this here and put this over here. All right, we 
we're gonna grab our go ahead and grab our chicken here. I'm just gonna put it right in there. So we got our chicken and we're just going to scoop it around in our wok mix here. Make sure it's nice, uh, probably like pretty evenly coated. Um, you don't want it too thick, duh, for obvious reasons. And you got to spread this around. So that's pretty good. Just put that down. Now, just hold on to that. Now you want to use a fork and poke your eggs, and then just give it a good swirl. Make sure that egg yolk and egg white are blended well. continue to rinse and repeat you get it until you get all of them done. Let's just test it out to see. Oh yeah that seems pretty good. So we'll go ahead and add our chicken to this. You're gonna leave it in there about minutes and that's to cook it thoroughly through so get it in that nice golden color. Go ahead and get our paper plate over here. Soak up all that grease. Smells delicious though, I mean, you know, honestly, you just kind of enjoy the sight of this.
smells really good still. All I can tell about it is the smell. It's like something about fried chicken that smells good. It inherently smells good. I mean, it may not be the best thing for you, but it smells so darn good. How can something smell so good and yet be so bad? Oh, what does that make sense? It makes no sense. None. Why do you curse us with like that? Like, you make things smell so good, yet they're not so good. Like, you know, it boggles the mind. Take, for example, some poisons smell very sweet. That's not a good thing, you know, because generally you would like your poisons to smell terrible, so you know it's poisonous, <laughs> but hey, because if you're going to make someone drink the poison, and you want it to smell nice, so go figure. I'm just letting you enjoy the sounds of, uh, of, uh, of bubbles. What was it then? Shakespeare, bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. I mean, you gotta love the sound of something crying. You, you know, you could probably stare at this all day and watch it cry, and you'll never get old of it, uh, tired of it. Just like, it's there. So, it sounds so good. Just flip it in, you know, give it a little, make sure it's well cooked on either side. More or less, I'm eyeballing it. I mean, you could get a timer and do this with a timer. That's totally up to you, but... Split that right there. And look at that. Juicy white in the middle. Perfectly done. So we got our tortilla shells right here. So we're just gonna continue slicing these up with the about some thin strips. Super juicy. It also helps to cut it over here so that way these juices don't get your tortilla soggy. Let's go grab our cheese. Back from the refrigerator. You know, I don't like it when you leave cheese out and it starts to get all like clumped together.
give a good amount. Now fold it. And there we go. Now you just kind of repeat this and then we're going to take it over there to our little frying pan and a little bit of our animal fat here. Slice some of that off. There. Got that all in there. Now we're going to grab our quesadilla. And there we go. Now we do that to get this golden uh, color from it right on there. Now you don't want to leave it on there too long, just long enough that the bottom half gets all toasty and you can see the cheese starting to melt. Turn it a little bit, and then start turning it that way. And I go to flip it. The opening comes back this way. There we are. Get some of that. Get back some of that animal fat on there. But see what I mean? Golden. That's how you do it. Now we just wait until this side it gets a little melted, golden, bam, done, quesadilla, what do you know, simple. <laughs> and it's going to probably be ten times as delicious, I mean, come on, a guac fried chicken quesadilla, what? Now, you don't have to use this type of cheese. You could use whatever cheese you want. This is the type of cheese I want. You can even mix cheeses together. You could go all crazy. You could probably dip this in sour cream if you wanted to. So that would not be a bad idea if you did that. And there we have our final product. Uh, our chicken quesadilla. All well, golden, delicious, ready to be served. Now again, you could add whatever type of cheese you want. You could uh, add whatever seasonings possibly you want. So it just depends on the person. This is the way I would do things. This is not necessarily the way you have to do things, but it's an interesting uh, way to make fried chicken quesadillas. So. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Castle Kitchen. We'll see you again next week for another mouth-watering meal. Till then, this is your host, the Phantom Chef, and we'll see you uh, on episode 9 of season 2. Take care.
unless you're being haunted and then I can't really help you. Maybe you know, maybe I know the ghost. You have to give me a call. I don't know. Or you just call the Ghostbusters. Something. <laughs>